Hey, what it do guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about focus, focus schools, focus standing, what is it, how to get it, so forth and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and crack into it. However, I do make a big disclaimer right now um, that the door that we are currently looking at on our orbiter, some of you are wondering how do I unlock it, how do we get into it? So the first question is how do I unlock focus? Uh, you unlock focus once you have completed uh, the quest The Second Dream. Okay, so this is spoiler heavy. If you've not completed that, then please just keep in mind of what you're about to go and see is a little bit later in the game for you. I'd advise against it, but if you do want to prepare yourself for it, that's totally fine. But anyways, let's just go ahead and get into uh, get into it. So what is focus? Uh, focus is a way of the Tenno to unlock their true abilities. Well, that's what it tells us. Uh, but within focus, there are five focus schools and ranking up each school will help your gameplay in different ways. Um, so I've already mentioned about how to go ahead and unlock the focus through the second uh, dream quest line. But once you've done all of that, you will go ahead and get access towards this menu here. Uh, you can see our daily focus in the bottom left. And we'll go ahead and break down what is what, how to go and do it. But before we go and do so, how do I earn focus standing? Now, focus standing is broken down into a few different ways. So forgive me if I forget anything, but I'm just going to try and do all of this off the top of the dome. So it's similar to Syndicate standing with killing so this is something that you'll earn passively um so you'll passively be gaining it when you have a lens on you and we'll talk about lenses in a second um however there are convergence orbs hopefully i'll have some gameplay that you should be able to go and see on the screen uh, roughly around the same time of a convergence orb when you pick it up it'll give you eight times the amount i believe it's eight times eight times the amount of uh, what your lens is already giving you. So the better the lens, the more return value you get back on the Convergence Orb. Uh, convergence Orbs only last for around 50 seconds. Um, so the idea is once you've got the orb, you want to do as much killing as you can within the 50 seconds. Um, focus standing is shared along affinity. So if you know how affinity kind of works, then you get an idea of how focus works from there onwards. Uh, unlike the Syndicate schools, um, you can't put a sigil or you don't just apply a sigil on your warframe or so forth you actually go and use lenses and you apply lenses to warframes weapons and there are actually a few other things you can go and apply them onto like key drives and operator amps and uh, arc wings and so forth but i don't really recommend that you put it on those um just on that weaponry on those warframes whatever i don't i don't really recommend it i would say stick to using lenses on your warframes and your weapons because the way of farming for focus uh, is quite meta it's quite efficient and we tend to go ahead and just keep it this way you'll see what i mean as i go ahead and continue describing it and get into it so we actually apply lenses to warframes and weapons but again unlike us unlike uh syndicates with their sigils you can't just replace whenever you want to. Um, so if you do replace a lens, you will break the previous lens that you already have in there. If you have no lens in there, you're fine. But if I wanted to change from uh, one of the focus schools is called Zenuric and another focus school is called Naramon. If I wanted to change from a basic Naramon lens over to a basic Zenuric lens to start training my Zenuric school, um, I would break the Naramon lens. So keep in mind that you can't just change... Uh, well, I mean, you can change, but there obviously will be downfalls towards it. It's not like sigils where you can just swap in and out. It's not like modding where you can just swap in and out. Um, you will be shattering and replacing it. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so there are four types of lenses. There are the basic lenses. Um, there are the greater lenses. There are the idle lenses and the, the lower lenses. Now, I'll just quickly bring up all five schools uh, on the screen here so you can kind of see them anyways. Madaron. Uh, sorry, Madaron, Madaray, Naramon, Zenyric, Vazarin, and Unaru. Uh, we will go and talk about those uh, in a second. If I pronounce any of them wrong, it's fine. I've been doing this for years, so <laughs> I'm used to pronouncing things wrong. Um, but yes, yeah, so there are basic uh, lenses or better lenses and so forth. So how does this work? Well, the basic lenses, so a basic Madaray lens, will give you one times 1.25. So whenever you're killing the affinity times 1.25, that's kind of the return that you're getting back, okay? Um... So we want to go with better lenses here. So there is basic lenses 1.25, greater lenses 1.75, idle on lenses 2.25, and lure lenses 3.25. Lure lenses got introduced not even that long ago. 
but they are basically the uh, the OGs. They are the dons of the the entire section. Make sure you try to go and get lower lenses. Um, what does this all mean if, if, if that doesn't make any sense to you? Basically, um, if you want to spend less time in the day uh, building up your focus standing and your focus schools, then go for the bigger and greater lenses because they offer better return values. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense there. So idle on lenses, lure lenses, try and grab those. You haven't got to spend as much time on it because the conversion rate is a lot higher, therefore. So efficiency. Um, now, keep in mind, a Warframe or a weapon, whatever you are applying the lens onto, has to be at least level 30. So, the way Affinity works within Warframe is you are ranking something from level 0 to level 30, correct? And if you former it, it kind of resets, so forth, so forth. But during that during that period um, of when you hit level 30, there's any affinity that comes in doesn't really do anything. You'll notice it kind of just stagnates. It seems in its own sense it's just wasted. Well, this is where focus schools come in. So you you might just be wondering, oh, you know, when I hit level 30, what, what happens from there or whatever. Well, this is, yeah, this is literally the focus stand inside of things. So make sure your warframes, your weapons are level 30. From there onwards, whenever you are killing, whenever you are doing anything, you are gaining the standing. You can go in and get convergence orbs and you can go ahead and help that out as well. Um, it's kind of like the second layer of affinity. What you will go ahead and notice, if I just quickly come back out of this section real quick, if you look in the bottom left hand side, you will see daily focus cap. Now this is your daily stand-in. Um, this scales on marshy ranking. So the higher marshy rank that you get, the more focus uh, daily cap you can also get a return in there. Um, now, although that this says, uh, I think it was 380,000, I think mine at the moment, I'm currently MR28 uh, in the game. Um, so I believe, uh, yeah, 390,000 is the max cap. I was just doing some testing earlier, so it's a little bit lower. Um, you can get focus in other ways. So yes, you can get it from killing, you can get it from um, convergence orbs and just focusing on that. But however, you can also get it another way. If I just go show you really quickly, we'll use Zenuric as an example here. Um, and I'll explain what all of this means in a second. And we go towards focus conversion. And this right here at the top is how much focus I have what would be left to spend so i've got 9.1 million if i wanted to go ahead and spend it and unlock it thankfully i've already maxed everything but if i did need any spare if they ever do an update i've got some spare however eidolons um there are brilliant eidolon shards there are radiant eidolon shards and there are synthetic eidolon shards this is another way of getting focus standing now does this go into your daily focus cap no it doesn't your daily focus cap is what you get from killing enemies the uh, Eidolon shards are something that you can use to surpass it. So even if I had 390,000 um, standing to use against enemies uh, and I didn't touch that, I could still put all of this in. So that's currently 34.2 million. If I was going to put all of this in, um, this obviously I couldn't fit that in 390,000. <laughs> this is way more than that. Um, so this actually surpasses it. This is its own ranking system. So if you were looking to get uh, focus back at a quicker rate, I'd recommend during the night time, whenever you can learn to do Eidolons, um, and I do have Eidolon guides uh, on my YouTube. That's a quick advertisement for you. Um, but whenever you are doing Eidolons, you will go ahead and slowly get Brilliant and Radiant Eidolon Shards. I encourage you to do them if you are looking to rank out your focus school as quick as possible to get quicker returns. During the daytime, when there are no Eidolons, um, you're better off just killing enemies and doing the two methods that I call uh, our Elite Sanctuary Onslaught um, and Sedna Adaro. Um, so those are two things that we can go ahead and break into. I can always go and do separate videos on those and you can see how I'm doing it and how I'm ranking it and the, the builds that I use. So I will go and follow up with that one. So uh, without uh, further ado, let's just go ahead and crack in towards the skills then. Um, what, what each node means within the school and what we're breaking it down to. I'm hoping I've covered everything there. I'm just double thinking. I think I should have. Again, this is all off the top of my head. Forgive me if I've got anything wrong, but let's go ahead and just get straight into it. I should be pretty confident on this. So uh, let's start off with Zenuric. Now, Zenuric is more of the, oh, the most common school you will come across. Um, so you might go ahead and ask, you know, Clark, I, I've just done Second Dream. What focus school should I go ahead and pick? Now, a lot of you guys, if you're not even watching this video or you might be coming to 
this video after you've done Second Dream, um, you will get an opportunity to be offered one of the focus schools. Some people will go to pick a different focus school, so maybe they'll start with Unaru and they're like, yeah, this is really cool. And then they're a little bit worried and they think, oh God, I should not pick this one. Now that I look at the other ones, the other ones were a little bit better once they get better understanding of it. Uh, do not worry, you can have all of them, okay? They are just like loadouts. You can switch and alternate between any of them that you want to once you finally unlock them and once you get everything on the inside, okay? So uh, focus uh, focus on Zenuric. Zenuric is more of the energy school. A lot of you guys will just be uh, going in uh, pilot modes. Warframe promotes pilot modes where you're just going back and forth and you're just fighting loads of enemies. You just want to get energy returns. That's fine. Just go for Zenuric at that point. It is definitely one of the better, uh, easier ones to go ahead and put on. It's very easy to understand. I'll break that down as well. Um, one thing you will go and notice, and I should go and stress just real quick, is the pull that you'll see in here. Now, the pull is very important as well. Um, the maximum you can go and get is 177. What does this mean? This is like capacity on warframes and capacity on weapons. So, um, when when you uh, form a weapon, you use less drain uh, on the on the mod. Uh, when you uh, when you add orican catalysts for your weapons, or when you add orican reactors, you get more capacity. Do you understand where I'm going with this? This is essentially the same thing here. Um, whenever you go and get some focus standing, I'd advise you straight away to start putting it into your pool because this will actually allow you to hold more and use more. So first thing to go and focus on is the pool. Try and get this up as high as you can. Um, but then let's just go ahead and crack into it. So as soon as you've got a good amount of pull, I don't know what a good amount is for you. We'll go ahead and find that out as soon as I click on Zenuric. Uh, let's go ahead and dive straight in towards Zenuric and have a little look. So this is how it's going to go ahead and look. I'll explain everything in a second. First thing I'm going to go and do is turn everything off because I want you guys to fully uh, understand what it is that you're looking at right now. Um, is that off and that's off and that's off. There we go. So that's perfect. So let's go and have a little look into it. So you'll notice the pool is up here, 177 out of 177. I've got 9.1 mil uh, remaining. Now, whenever you're unlocking a uh, school or whenever you're unlocking a particular node, um, you will have an option here that will say unlock. So you've got to go and pour some points into it. So if we start with energy pulse, you'll see it says max rank. Uh, these little points down here underneath them, these little points are telling you uh, how much more... Um, standing that you will have to pour into them there will be a number around here so don't worry um i can't quite remember where it was but there will be a number around here and you just slowly pull your focus in there so any focus that you earn you'll essentially be putting it into these points to make them stronger give stronger returns and to finally go ahead and max it out okay so, um, I do have all of this maxed out. This is completely fine. Let's go and read it. Energy Pulse. It is a passive. Uh, energy pickups grant 50% additional energy uh, over 5 seconds. So, this gives you an EOT energy over time. Any energy orb that you're picking up, you're just going to go and get additional energy. It's very simple to go and understand that. So, is this good? It's very, very good. Do you see what I mean? Uh, this is why Zenuric is really nice to go and look on. Um, now, one thing I will go and break down is you will go to notice some shapes in here. Um, you'll notice these, uh, I think it's hexagons, forgive me if I've got that wrong. Uh, you'll notice these uh, hexagons going across here, and you'll also notice these circles going down there. Now, the circles um, mostly are either passives or, in this scenario, they should actually be actives uh, towards your operator. So it's mostly and only your operator that will trigger them. Um, so you will do operator combat. That's something that they looked into when they reworked the focus tree. So that's what we're looking at right now. So um, energizing dash. Uh, void dash creates a zone of energy for eight seconds. Allies passing through the zone gave five energy uh, per second for 30 seconds. So if you imagine picking up an energy orb and you're getting additional energy here, and if you switch over towards your operator and just dash with your operator, you'll notice a lot of people doing this within Warframe. Again, this is one of the most meta things for you to go and take, hence why I'm telling you to go and take the school right at the very beginning. This is very, very good. A whole bunch of refunding uh, energy for your builds. Um, this means whenever you're using Warframes and you don't have uh, maybe fleet and expertise, or uh, God forbid, I don't know why you wouldn't have a streamline at this point, uh, but if you don't have energy efficient builds and uh, maybe you don't have Arcane Energize and, uh, or Energy Siphon as a mod, um, you can use this. This is a good way for you to go ahead and get some kind of return in energy without there having to be an energy orb over there, without you having to have a, a trinity on your team using energy vampire. It's a good way of getting energy back, okay? Uh, then we got lightning dash down here. It manifests a ball of lightning and void dash that travels slowly. It zaps enemies. So this is basically like DOT. So you kind of got your energy over time and then you got your DOT. 
okay? Uh, inner might down here, increase heavy attack efficiency. This basically means whenever you use a heavy attack, the heavy attack consumes combo counter. Um, well, this will go ahead and increase that efficiency of the combo counter. So instead of you using a full 100% where it can completely consumes 100% of your combo counter, it's going to consume it by 60, so you'll have the 40% remaining, and then you should be all good, all right? So it doesn't consume the entire amount. Uh, temporal Blast, Void uh, Blast. This is whenever, if you're on keyboard, forgive me if you're a console player here, you might have to translate... Um, what it is that I'm saying, um, as I've never played on console, so again, I'm just going to apologize. Um, energizing dash is whenever you're dashing with your, uh, or these dashes down here, or whatever you're just dashing. So, whenever, so again, if you're on keyboard, it's mostly when you're crouching. So, if you do control and then you hit space and, and you're like bullet jumping or you're just dashing, whatever it is that you're doing, this would be the same command for bullet jump. Um, that's basically what you're doing to create these. Uh, this one on keyboard, it's E. Again, forgive me, console players, but on keyboard it is E. So, uh, Temporal Blast, Void Blast uh, slows enemies by 80% for Void Seconds, so a bit of crowd control within this one. Um, and uh, Void Blast creates a surge of electricity, zapping enemies, so a little bit of DOT for this one as well. Uh, then we got Void Static. Um, Void Static is when you are holding uh, control. So this is kind of your dashing, this is your uh, your E, uh, and this one is just when you're going cloaked, whenever you cloak up, this is when you enter Void Mode. So Void Mode emits a pulse that deals 500 damage per second uh, over 50 meters and costs an additional one energy per second. Um, and then on this one, Void Singularity, Void Mode pulls in enemies within 20 meters towards the operator and costs an additional uh, two energy per second. Now, um, oh, sorry, now I'll go ahead and talk about these ones over here as well. I just forgot about those. I thought I talked about them. Uh, so we got Void Siphon, Passive, Increase uh, Operator Energy Regeneration by 90%, and Void Flow, uh, Operation Energy, uh, Increases Operator Energy by 90%. So regeneration and overall uh, build up, uh, overall capacity of your um, operator. Uh, in terms of energy. Now, you also got to notice that although I did go and say these ones are actives towards the operator, these ones are actually pretty much just for the operator. Now, I do want to go and point something else out here. If you happen to go and see where this says max rank, you see how all of these say max rank? Right, these are just normal bounds. So what I mean by that is, is on Zenuric, whenever I'm on this node, whenever I'm on this school, I will definitely get all of these. However, you might happen to notice these ones on my left-hand side, and you might also happen to notice that this does not say max rank. See that? Max rank. This says unbound. What this means is that I can actually unbind this node and use it in another school. So essentially, all of these ones that you see here on the left-hand side are all from other schools. So whenever I'm using Zenuric, this is why you want your pool nice and high. I can also benefit from other waybounds within other schools, but I can still go ahead and use these ones on Zenuric, okay? But I can't use the Void Static in another school. So what I mean by that, in case you're still confused, is... Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'll actually commit those. That's fine. So if I go and switch over towards here, if we just remember Void Siphon, and let's remember Energy Pulse, just so that this is easy to understand, okay? Void Siphon and Energy Pulse. If I now go cycle over to Vazarin, and I have a little look in here. So let's look for Void Siphon and Energy Pulse. Now, we know it should not be in here. So let's go and look up here. Void Siphon. Well, I see Void Siphon, and there's Void Flow. So those are the two unbounds. And Energy Pulse. Do you see what I mean? So Energy Pulse is not in here, but I can get the Void Siphon and the Void Flow from Zenuric, which means that I can go ahead and increase my operator's energy, and I can also get the regeneration for that energy for my operator whenever I'm on a Vazarin tree. Hopefully that clears it up for you guys. I wanted to go ahead and, sorry if it seems a little uh, demeaning, I'm not trying to talk down to you. I just want to make sure it's cleared up for everybody, especially those who are not native uh, of the English tongue. So to make sure that I just showcase it as much as I can. So yes, you want to go ahead and unbind these. Now, Unlike these ones, where, uh, unlike these max rank ones and the passes within them, um, when you go ahead and rank these up, this is fine. This is just a natural ranking up. However, whenever you want to go and unbind something, you will need to do Eidolons. It's a mandatory. So this very last rank on each and every single one, it doesn't matter if there was only three, it doesn't matter if there was 23. The last node on an unbound node requires one brilliant Eidolon shard, which you will find here. And it also requires uh, one million focus. So if you think about it, there are five schools. So there are 10 nodes, which means you need 10 million focus and you need 10 brilliant Eidolon shards. So if you do happen to do Eidolons, please try to save at least 10 brilliant Eidolon shards. 
Now, Eidolon Shards can also be consumed, like I said earlier, for Focus Stand-In. So this alone is 25,000 Stand-In, which is a good amount of Stand-In if you really think about it. And this one here is 40,000 Stand-In. Now, Radiant Eidolon Shards and Synthetic Eidolon Shards, you do not need um, to... Uh, unlock or unbound or anything within the schools. Uh, these are purely only used to convert. Whereas the brilliant ones, you will need at least 10. Okay? From there onwards, you can t turn as many of them in for standing as you want to, but you still need at least 10. Okay? So, uh, when it comes towards Xenuric, I'm just going to go and give you guys a general idea as to what it is that you're looking at and you're starting on the tree. Uh, go ahead and unlock Energy Pulse. Now, I do also want to disclaim this because I've seen this happen to some people and it's okay, don't worry, you can make rookie mistakes, but let's go ahead and just quickly walk you through this. When you've, uh, when you've finally unlocked this and it says max rank, activate it. Do not just leave it because it's not activated, which means if you look at my pull up here, it says 177 out of 177. This is 6, 171 out of 177. This is also changed color. I believe this has gone to red. Forgive me, I'm color deficient, so I'm going to go and call it on the red. So this should be active, okay? But uh, this one should be black because I've not activated it. So now that I've done this, you'll see that this will allow me to now start picking these ones, okay? So you will always need the center to at least start taking everything else. So if I take this, see, energy pulse must be activated. So if I click that, click that. And click that. You see how my pull's going down? I click this, and now I click this, I click this, 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 and this. And then over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now my pool is 5 out of 177. It's okay, you might panic and be like, oh god, well where's the last 5? No, that's alright, Senyuric doesn't use the last 5. Although the pool is 177, I believe it's only Unaru um, that actually benefits from the 177 complete pool. Um, I believe Naramon is, uh, you'll have quite a lot left on Naramon. I, I might have got this wrong, but we'll show, we'll show you uh, in a second. I don't know why I say we, I will show you in a second. So anyways, when we're coming towards Senyuric, what is the best to go ahead and focus on? Focus with Energy Pulse, max this out as quick as you can. This will help your Warframe uh, uh, energy pickups, um, give you additional energy, so this is very good for EOT. So if you find yourself uh, on a spammy uh, Warframe, this is going to be really good for you to always go and get energy back. The second thing to go to pick up will be Energize and Dash, okay? So... Again, you da you switch out to your operator, you dash, I just recommend dashing right in front of you, just dash into the floor right in front of you, and then go and switch back towards your Warframe. Um, it, there, there will be a zone on the ground, so uh, allies passing through the zone gain 5 energy per second for 30 seconds, but keep in mind, there's a total of 38 seconds, so you do 38 times 5, not 30 times 5. Because remember, that it creates a zone for 8 seconds. When you leave the zone, you then get 30 seconds of 5 energy. But if you don't leave the zone, or if you leave the zone and come back in, you reset it. So if you stay into the very last second, you'll have 38 seconds worth of energy. If you really think about it, it just resets like that. So you can actually get the maximum efficiency of 38 seconds, or you could just take the 30 seconds. It's completely fine. Hopefully you understand what I mean by that one, but just basically re-enter the field if you need to, or just stay into it, if that makes any sense. But you can always go ahead and leave it. Right. Hopefully that makes sense. So uh, energy pulse, energizing uh, pulse, uh, pulse uh, and energizing dash. These two, you definitely want to go ahead and snag up right at the very beginning. Now, when it comes towards the rest of the tree, uh, we always go towards our operators and our combat operators, especially if you are going to do Eidolons, uh, profit takers, exploiters, um, any kind of speed running as well. Um, I think in the future there will be more reason and uh, more purpose to use operators uh, combat-wise. But as of right now, um, do go ahead and snag up these ones. Just go ahead and get that unlocked and everything else should be there. Now, I actually really like Void Singularity. Uh, this pulls in enemies within 20 meters towards the operator. Um, hopefully, again, I'll have some gameplay on the screen here. You'll actually see me pair this with Magus Lockdown. Uh, was it Magus? Yeah, it's Lockdown uh, as an arcane for my operator. So you you crowd control them so they can't move, and then you pull them in. This is really good if you just want to go ahead and and destroy a whole bunch of enemies in a couple of seconds and just pull them right in next to each other. This is also good for um, Mirage's Ledger Domain build, which is a sleight of hands. Again, I should have gameplay footage. Um, so you'll see how I can pull enemies across the traps that she sets. So I just pull them into it and then that starts spreading this uh, huge damage AoE across the entire map uh, of like Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. 
Um, again, I'll have a guide out on how I run my builds and so forth on that one. Uh, so voice singularity is also very good as well voice static is fine it's just extra damage lightning dash is fine it's extra damage there's nothing wrong with these uh, obviously go ahead and get them the idea is you want to unlock the entire school i'm just saying where you want to go get energy pulse get energizing dash get void siphon void flow um but this will help you dash in um sometimes you will see uh, again i maybe not have this on the screen sometimes you'll see uh, some people are dashing on their operators and you think god how are they dashing infinitely and how are they still doing it and so forth and how are they just keep going well void flow is one of the one of the tools that actually allows you to go ahead and do this because you've got more energy uh, inside your pool so therefore you can dash more right more energy for more dashes the other one that's shared between is actually mind sprint which actually increases the speed of the dash by 120 percent so between void flow mind sprint and energy pads now i actually use large energy pads um you'll see people uh who are again just dashing it looks like they're infinitely dashing but what they're actually doing is they're laying energy pads behind them so they're putting an energy pad down um and it just resets the energy remember um operator energy is essentially going to be the same way as what warframe energy is so large energy pads can refill your abilities again so when you use temporal blast um whenever you are in void mode you can get energy back okay if you put down like an energy pads so just keep that in mind all right so void singularity is also really nice temporal blast was actually really good um and i still believe to this day is also good for disruption um you'll happen to come across demolis in the disruption game modes temporal blast is really good to actually slow them down uh, there's not an awful lot of things to actually go ahead and slow them down lock them down root snares taunts demolis are quite immune to an awful lot of things but temporal blast is a good thing to pair up with arcane um lockdown um and then slow them down so that you can go and get more damage off um obviously the more that you go and do it the more resistant that they come so you want to make sure that you uh, get it off nice and quick and then just try and take that enemy down it slows down the pace of things which is really really good so if anything needs to get from a to b slow it down and you should be all right okay uh, Voltic Blast, again, it's just extra damage. Um, so we kind of look at a, what I do, what do I overly recommend? Uh, unless you're doing a heavy attack build, go for Inner Might, that's fine. But what do I overly recommend? Energy Pulse, Energize and Dash, Void Singularity, and Temporal Blast. These are the ones over my time of playing Warframe that I've seen the most usage for them. Lightning Dash is also very good. Um, if you're ever looking to just go ahead and clear out tile sets whilst at the same time that you're pairing it with Energize and Dash, uh, whilst at the same time you're pairing that with uh, Lockdown, um, you'll find just yourself dealing a tremendous amount of damage i believe uh lockdown arcane is actually going to change uh, in the in one of the next hot fixes that come out um, and i don't think you'll actually do uh puncture damage as much anymore but uh at, at to this stream uh, to the stream sorry i'm used to streaming uh shout out to my stream uh to this stream or to this video right here um it used to go in and do damage okay but it doesn't as much anymore but you can go in and compare uh pair this with other things and it's very very good okay anyways i'm waffling on but hopefully you get the idea that's basically zenuric and obviously all of these other nodes from other schools so if i go and get out here commit these changes yes i'm all good so let's go over towards the next one and arguably what would also be considered one of the best schools to go ahead and take so zenuric is your energy school and energy efficiency it's still got good damage and it's got still got good utility but it's mostly your energy school okay now we got vazarin and again this is arguably one of the next best ones going to take or the best ones going to take it really just depends oh it's vazarin that's 42 wait do i not have oh no there we go <laughs> i was gonna say 42 is a bit too high there uh, i may have uh, missed something just double checking i wish i could see these colors forgive me shouldn't be doing this for a video but see 15 out of 177 not going to panic too much there are things that are activated uh elsewhere which we'll go and use up more of the pool but i'm fine here so fazarin fazarin is more of your health protective type pool now this is a very good pool so let's go and start off with mended unity increases affinity radius by 25 meters yes so um if you're training with uh, other people and you're doing things like survival um whenever you go into like a public group of survival you always have to notice one person running away being leroy jenkins not sticking with the group and he's like it's okay i don't need a team uh, only to die later but whenever he's walking away it's a bad thing for you it's not a bad thing because it's like oh okay i have to go and res him he's really far or whatever it's a bad thing because if he's killing anything you're not getting that affinity 
and he's not getting your affinity either. It should always be relatively, if you're going to play in a group, stick with a group as much as you possibly can. Um, but this will increase your affinity radius by 25 meters. There are actually Warframe abilities out there that do scale of this. As of right now, one that does come to mind is Trinity's Blessing. Her Blessing does not scale on range, it scales on affinity. So it's 50 meters, I believe, flat whenever you go ahead and mod for Blessing. If you actually take Trinity with Vazarin and Mend in Unity, it actually increases it to 70. 75 meters so therefore you can bless people who are just a little bit out of that 50 meter range rather than you having to gap close and get to them a bit quicker um this can also go and help out someone like trinity and a bless build so uh, good for affinity good for uh, trinity trinity and affinity uh, mend and soul the next four revisor instantaneous um this is so unbelievably useful it's it's ridiculous so whenever you are resin a person who's on the floor whether it be a companion uh, an ally or so forth um this is an instantaneous revive this also applies towards you anyone anything next four revives are instantaneous which means you just walk up to them um, on again forgive me console users i apologize on keyboard you press x if that is your default uh standard european keyboard uh, uh you will go ahead and press x and instead of having that uh the 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 green uh emit pulse that kind of comes out the little mist uh to slowly res them um you will just insta res them like bam so uh, it's, it's it's what's written on the tin here you know it's self-explanatory i don't think i need to explain that one but i'll do it anyway so there you go uh from here onwards uh, again so max ranks max ranks you can see that all of these are the circle ones over here as well so we know that these are operators let's go towards the uh, unbounds and the way bounds so enduring tides increases operator health by 150 percent and rejuvenating tides increases operator health regeneration by four percent so this is the health bound tree you saw that zenny rape with the void void flow void siphon was the energy boundary you're starting to understand what Vazarin is mostly all about guardian shell this is void blast so again whenever you press your e um it can be drained uh, sorry it can be charged to manifest a shield that drains energy for four uh, for every 400 damage absorbed um i haven't found myself using this an awful lot there are warframe abilities and there are uh, mods like adaptations and so forth that are just naturally better for you to go ahead and sit on um it has been good. Whenever I have used it, it has actually has been good, but I haven't really used it that much because there hasn't really been that much of a need for it. Um, and unfortunately, I can't think of many uh, particular strategies within Warframe that would go ahead and consume this. But I'm still saying it's a good ability, but there just isn't much <laughs> usage for it. Uh, that doesn't mean that it makes it bad. Uh, so Guardian Blast. Void Blast consumes 25 energy for each ally hit within 8 meters and grants them 160 shields. Now, what's actually really cool about this as well is we are in a meta of shield gating um if you guys are just turning back to warframe or if you guys are just coming to warframe um what happened recently within warframe was uh, shields could be bypassed uh, quite significantly by a few things and um once a shield was hit um and if there was any remaining extra damage and your shield went to zero it would then just hit your hp now what actually kind of happens is if you act if you understand the warframe hildren and how her passive works imagine that on a little bit of a smaller scale but applied to everyone and everything shield gating um and shields are in a much much better position so to go ahead and see that you can go and grant a bit of extra shields and guardian uh, guardian blast is really cool to go and see there it will go and help out with all of the shields even towards your operators even towards whatever it is that you're applying um guardian blast is not that bad it's just because of the shields rework and how shields work within warframe now um protected dash now this one is amazing this is one of your bread and butters going to take allies hit by void dash are granted immunity from damage for five seconds and healed uh 60 over five seconds so not only are they immune but they're also healed um this was actually used as a way and i still believe to this day it is used as a way for some people to solo and not just solo, but also go and use during idle and hunts. Um, they can go to protect the laws, uh, make them immune uh, to any kind of damage, especially against the Gantilist uh, Eidolon. Uh, this was a good way of just protecting them and also healing them out as well. Um, it, it's it's very, very good. Okay, this is good bread and butter. If you want to go and use this on your team as well, uh, you can go to protect yourselves. I believe you can also go and use this uh, on excavators. Uh, excavator Oh, excavators i can't talk in the excavation mission um so you can go ahead and protect your excavators as well uh really good for arbitrations excavation uh just good for excavation in general you can also go and protect pretty much everything everything and anything that is considered somewhat of an ally or needs some kind of protecting i forgive me in this one you might be able to confirm this inside the comment section um i don't believe it protects cryopods uh oh sorry 
cyropods, I have not to pronounce them, uh, within the defense missions, uh, what you're normally protecting with the Tenno inside. I don't believe it actually protects those, but it does protect an awful lot. Experiment with it, but yes, it is very, very good. It's one of the best things about this tree. Uh, Sonic Dash, Void Dash no longer displaces enemies. Instead, it emits a shockwave 14 meters wide and travels 8 meters, stunning any enemy it hits. Very good towards utility, uh, very good towards crowd control. Uh, it's not too bad, actually, to go ahead and just do it, especially if you're doing protective dash and your uh, allies are surrounded by an awful lot of enemies. It's a good utility to kind of put uh, on top of it uh, and help those uh, guys out whilst you're protecting them and healing them. Void regen. Um, whenever you're in void modes, whenever you're cloaking, um, you uh, heal 25 uh, health per second. Um, this ability costs an additional 2 energy. You can normally pair this up um, with uh, Magus Repair. I believe it's Magus Repair. Uh, as from one of the... Um, Operator Arcanes, uh, and the Magus Repair will go and heal out your Warframe, and you've got this kind of healing out at the same time. So between the, between the two of them, you kind of got the best of both worlds. Your Operator's okay, your Warframe's okay, you're okay, everyone's okay, I'm okay, and uh, this video is okay. So moving on to the next one, Void Ages. Uh, Void Mode creates a shield that grows up to 12 meters over 5 seconds. This ability costs uh, an additional uh, 2 energy. Uh, I can't quite remember if you could actually pair this one with this one and kind of get that extra shield that kind of grows up and then using Guardian Shell to kind of protect. So there is like a very protective... Uh, route that you could go and take there but i haven't found myself overly using this one as much i'm just going to go and say that and i don't really find myself using this this one as, as much i should actually use vazarin a bit more often um but just going to let you know arguably definitely um one of the better trees uh and it's a big competition towards Zenuric. so uh mending soul mending unity uh, protective dash very very good abilities going to be taken in here nothing against the others i'm not trying to you know, said it that bad. I'm just saying that these ones here are very bread and butter when it comes towards Vazarin and obviously your waybounds and so forth. Commit these changes, we're all good there. Moving over towards Unaru, so Xenuric was your energy tree, Vazarin was your uh, health tree and your protective tree. Um, keep in mind, um, you'll also see their little icons above their names over here. So whenever you're doing like a Warframe uh, and you see next to the Warframe at the top and you see like these little icons, um, it, if you get familiar with these icons, you'll know which lens you have the warframe without you having to actually go into the actions and find out what the name of the lens is so you can recognize the pictures with them so now we're on unaru um unaru is more of your tanking uh, related one and uh, good utility on top of it so uh voice binds um i don't have something ticked in here give me a second there we go. I saw that I had some remaining pull up there. So as you can see, 177, 0. It completely used everything up. This is why you need the max pull of 177 is because of the Unaru tree. So let's go break into it. Void Spines. 100% uh, damage taken is returned back to the attacker. I don't think I could explain that any more clearly. Uh, clearly? It clearly, it's literally what it is uh, stone skin increases armor for operator and warframe by 60 an extra flat 60 is going to throw in there if you are looking to go ahead and ramp up some other builds uh, whether you want to go and do things like rhino's iron skin or you want to go and make uh, frost snow globe a bit stronger to add more health towards uh, either of them uh, you can go ahead and consider something like this going to add an extra 60 into there to try and really uh, min max those values uh, but still kind of nice anyway so good survivability good tankiness towards it now let's go towards uh, the uh, waybounds up here. So we got Basilisk Scales increases Operator Armor by 200% and Basilisk Gaze increase Void Blast Radius by 60%. So this, as you can see, Operator Armor by 200%, massive, really, really good. Uh, now the increased Void Blast Radius by 60%, um, arguably, it, looking at it on its own, it's like, eh. You know, just looking at it it's on, on its own. It's, so now we've got to kind of look over towards, well, what does Void Blast and Unaru actually do? So we look at Magnetic Blast. Enemies hit by Void Blast are affected by Magnetines. So if you guys have ever used um, Mags 2, um, you'll kind of know what Magnetize is. The Void Effect, the Void Proc, is also a Magnetize as well. What does this basically mean? It means any kind of bullets that you are shooting within the proximity uh, of this... Um, Magnetize um, will essentially be drawn towards the center and kind of gravitize towards that as they're, you know, being really nice and tight. Um, I don't know how else I can explain that. So, um, yeah, so again, kind of nice, but okay, fair enough. Now we look towards Unaru Wisp. This is where, in a general situation, you won't use this that often, but for Eidolons, this is meta. This is so incredibly important. Uh, Void Blast has a 100% chance to summon a Wisp when it. T uh, when it damages an enemy. The Wisp can be picked up by allies to increase operator damage by 100% for 12 seconds. 
So an extra additive 100% thrown into there, an extra additive one on top of the formula. Um, really, really nice gun throw in there. If anybody is using, um, th this is paired very, very well. If one person's using this, um, and if I could just quickly show you another one, we'll get to this in a second, but in Madurai, uh, you had this called Void Strike. Um, if anybody's using Uniru Wisp, um, and they void, uh, sorry, they, uh, blast the idol on with their E. Uh, whoever's picking or whoever's doing Void Strike can go and pick those up and get even more damage from this. So we will go and explain that a bit more, but that is basically the paired meta between these. You normally have what if you're doing a group of four, you normally have one person on Uniru and three people on Madurai, and three people on Madurai are normally changing, charging the Void Strike, and one person on Uniru is just giving them Wisps to go ahead and take it in turn shooting. It really depends on how good you are at Eidolons or where you are in the Eidolon meta or so on and so forth. But is this good? Yes, this is so so good so to increase the radius of it as well when we pair it towards that really good utility crispy it's all nice so there you go uh, moving over towards Void Shadow. So Void Mode uh, now renders allies within 25 meters visible. This ability costs an additional 4 energy per second per ally cloaked. This is very good. This is very good. Um, it's huge for survivability. Um, and there are two really good forms of using this um, that I can think of at the top of my head. There's two really good forms uh, of using this within Warframe. The first one is Sedna Vojanoi, Earning Endo. Again, I actually have a video on this. Uh, if you guys have not checked it out feel free to go and check out my channel and check out how to go and earn endo uh, normally a necros runs this and um cloaks and protects the entire team so all of us are invisible the enemies can't see us we're killing the enemies um we've got way more survivability because of this this is really nice another method for this uh, which i don't really have a video on uh, at the moment at the moment um if i do um is an index excalibur umbra cheese the way that this works is is that you would normally have two Excalibur players, Excalibur Umbra players. Uh, they would both switch out and let their Excalibur Umbra with a really good weapon like Comb or something else like that. Um, and then they would have two other players maybe playing like Mag uh, with Greedy Pull Augment um, so that they could pull in the credits on the ground. Um, or they would just take two tanks, maybe like a Revenant, a Rhino, whatever it is. Um, so they take some kind of survivability, but basically the way that it is, is that everybody looks in a particular direction to force enemies spawn in another direction, and with that direction that enemies spawn into, they're basically now fought uh, and fighting against, uh, well, they don't even get a chance to fight, really, against Excalibur Umbra, who is essentially an aimbot at this point, who just carries you through it, and when you turn around, there's credits all over the ground, and it's fantastic. So this is just huge survivability. There's quite a few team environments where this is used. Outside of that, for general players, Play. you don't use it as often but in team environments um never forget about this it's very 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 good try or at least try not to forget about it uh void uh, i don't even know this chrysalis um void mode uh, reduces damage taken uh, by invisible allies uh, within uh, 25 minutes by 80 percent so good utility good tanking you're really crispy there uh moving up towards sunder and dash uh using void dash through an enemy will reduce their armor by up to 75 percent with the changes towards corrosive that happened recently uh this could be really good to go ahead and just lower enemies armor but keep in mind you're working a little bit harder than smarter um but in terms of scaling this could be really nice if you had one person on it uh, this has like a never ending potential basically this this one ability uh, but you don't find yourself using it too often because warframes and warframes weapons uh we just tend to slaughter majority of enemies so we don't really find ourselves needing the combat operators as much but just let you know that there is a good 75 percent uh armor reduction right there um, using uh, Void Dash through an enemy will reduce their damage by 50%. It's kind of like how Puncture used to going to work when Puncture was procced uh, as well, or how Puncture still works, I believe, uh, when Puncture was procced as well. Um, lowering enemies' damage, lowering their armor. You, this is basically screaming uh, against Grenier. Uh, I don't know if these are actually applied towards bosses. Um, please feel free to go ahead and comment in the comment section if that is. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. I don't think I would have ever have done it otherwise. Um, but yes, this is very, very good. This is screaming Grenier. Get rid of that armor. Get rid of that damage. You're all crispy. Again, so that's the entire thing. What would I go to focus on? I get Void Spies uh, straight off the top. Then I would start leaning uh, towards the Void Shadow. Um, but it's mostly only for team play environment. If not, then I'll go towards the Uniru Wisp. Because I would start trying to do Eidolons. Keep ranking out everything else. Basilisk Scales. Basilisk Gaze. Really, really nice going take from there onwards. And obviously the Stone Skin as well. Um, this is obviously going to be a really good utility. If you are going to go to, towards the team environment 
moment, then obviously go and take your Chrysalis as well, so good pairing. And these ones I don't find myself using as often, but that doesn't mean that they're bad, I just don't find myself using it as often. So moving over towards the Madurai tree, again, the Unaru tree is the armor one. Um, so moving over towards the Madurai tree, this is more of your damage tree. So let's just crack straight into it. I uh, also don't have something ticked here. It's all my voids because I untick them from uh, my other builds. So as you can see, if you untick them from another school, they actually get unticked from all schools. So uh, I actually forgot about that. <laughs> Anyways, Phoenix Talons. Physical damage is increased by 25%. Now, there are multiple elements within Warframe, but three physicals are Impact, Slash, and Puncture. Um, uh, yeah, Impact, Slash, and Puncture. These elements are going to be increased uh, damage-wise by 25%. Self-explanatory, moving on to the next one. Phoenix Spirit, elemental damage is increased by 25%. Heat, cold, uh, what are the other ones? Heat, cold, uh, toxin, electric, uh, corrosive, radiation, viral blast, magnetic, and gas. There you go. Um, typically, I believe void would also be thrown in towards the equation. I've got no idea of true damages, but you get the idea. So this is a good way to just go ahead and increase damages. Um, really nice to go and throw one there. If you don't care about the energy from Zenurik, you don't care about the survivability from Vazarin, and all you look at is going and do is bump up more damage numbers uh Madurai, these two right here nice and crispy moving over towards the um way bounds up here in a gaze increase energy for amps and void beam by 40 percent self-explanatory uh just increase the overall capacity and then the energy regeneration rate whenever you get return um of your amps so if you're shooting more of your amps uh, which is a uh, operator weapon again you'll be using this a lot through idlons uh, these are very very important to go ahead and take up there to go and help you uh with that damage uh, output uh, and regeneration um, so, moving over towards this one, Void Radiance. Now, this consumes 50 energy on leaving Void Mode to blind enemies within 10 meters for 5 seconds. Now, this is good in terms of crowd control, but on Eidolons, this isn't good. Because you can't really blind an Eidolon, and you can't really blind much of what's going on within Eidolon Knights. So, hear me out. When you... Because this one here is basically the most bread and butter when it comes towards Madurai, besides from these two on top of it. And also, this is really nice as well, but... Um, you really want this, okay? I'm going to explain this in a second. When it comes to Void Radiance, if you only care about blinding enemies, and that is something that you would really like to do, max it out. However, if you don't care about that, do not max this out. You will need to unlock it. I cannot take this if I do not have this unlocked. So unlock it, but do not max it out and do this. The reason being is because the only thing that it scales on is energy. So it consumes more and more energy for you. Um, I think it does. Yeah, well, it might actually scale on duration or range, but I don't think it does. But I believe it's, it mostly scales on energy. So I'm consuming more energy whenever I'm coming out of my charges for Void Strike. It's really, it can just be really frustrating to go ahead and lose extra energy for almost no reason when nothing's actually happening um because you're not blinding anything so just keep that in mind if you are going to do a lot of idlons uh do not max this just put a point into it you've unlocked it now moving to void strike now let's go and talk about void strike on leaving void mode the next eight attacks deal 12 percent additional damage for every second that you are cloaked so the longer that you remain cloaked the more percentage that goes up infinitely I, I, until you actually go and hit the damage cap in warframe which i think is like slightly over two billion that's basically about it um infinitely at, at this point um but the next eight attacks doesn't matter what the attacks are coming from the next eight so your warframes your weapons your operator weapons the next eight but keep in mind is that it is the next eight you can't refresh that you have to use all eight charges so if you happen to only have two charges left and you're still charging it, depending on what you're doing, you might actually be better just to shoot twice, get rid of the charges, and charge a new fresh eight. Do you see what I mean? Um, again, you can check out my Eidolon guides on this, and it'll explain it a bit more, but uh, hopefully that helps you, okay? But Void Strike is very, very bread and butter when it comes towards Madurai. Flame Blast. Uh, void Blast releases a ball of fire that deals 250% of uh, Void Blast damage and explodes after 0 0.6. And then Ryzen Blast increases Void Blast damage by 200% and it can now be charged to deal additional damage. When it comes to damage, uh, again, I've echoed this just earlier, our Warframes and weapons do a significant amount. We won't really need to find ourselves doing this unless there is more and more of a reason for us to actually damage in our operators for our operator abilities. So please go ahead and keep that in mind, okay? Uh, but otherwise, I don't find myself using this as much. But there are these, and these are extremely useful. Um, 
but to use these, uh, well, let's go and talk about it. Blazing Dash. Void Dash leaves a trail of fire that deals 1,000 damage uh, a second over 14 seconds. Void Dash will now stun enemies instead of displacing them. Let's go and focus on the first part, the amount of damage that it does uh, as a trail, uh, like a trail of blaze on the ground. This is extremely useful for not consuming Void Strike charges. Now, when you have to go and do things like Eidolons, a, a, lot, of the, a lot of the focus schools are mostly when it comes towards Eidolons because Eidolons are very meta for the schools. Um, when you're doing the Eidolons, the Vomvalists, the Vomvalists, when they go out and spawn, they have two forms. They have a physical form and an energy form. The physical form can be uh, damaged and broken down by basically any means of damage, but the energy form can only be broken down through void damage. Well, this is basically elemental and this is heat damage, okay? So we actually, instead of using a charge, so instead of shooting the Vomvalists or instead of using an ability or whatever, we continue to charge. But what we actually go and do is we use this. We dash back and forth over a spot where we know Vombolus are, and this will kill the Vombolus. Not only will that do it, but this will also do it. Void Dash deals 400 extra damage to enemies. So when you are actually dashing straight over them, you are dealing extra damage on top of it. This is how we save charges. Outside of that, I don't find myself using this in any other general respect, but I guess it would still be fine if you are looking to, again, maybe pair it with uh, particular arcanes on the operator, but just going to let you know. So when it comes towards Matarai, what are we looking towards? Phoenix Talons, Ella, uh, Phoenix Spirit, the, these are the first two that I go and pick up. Straight after that, go straight towards Void Strike. It's so unbelievably useful. You can use this across the entirety of Warframe, but again, because uh, Warframe's weapons are so strong, we don't. But otherwise, inside uh, Eidolons, this is what you want. When it says Madurai, and when you hear Madurai, you also think of Void Strike. Uh, inner Gaze, Eternal Gaze for your Operator Amps, very, very good. And Blazing Dash and Meteoric Dash, also very, very good. Mostly for the Vombolus and not using any charges here. Flame Blast and Rising Blast may be good, but I don't really find myself using them as often. Let's go and save those changes as we move into the final school. So as you can see, uh, Madurai is our damage school, and Naramon. Now Naramon's a bit of a unique one. Let me go ahead and just put these uh, wave bounds back on here. So we got this, and we got that. I believe that's correct. 18 sounds about right. So Naramon's a bit of a, a, a unique one in terms of what it is. It's kind of like the tree that has almost the remaining things in it so it's like your affinity tree it's also like your melee tree um but let's go and call it like your affinity melee tree for now and also a bit of utility so let's go and break it down affinity spike kills from melee uh, uh, sorry kills from melee attacks grant 45 percent more melee efficiency what's really good about this is if you are focus farming or killing more things with focus or just ranking up affinity spikes really really good Power Spike. Melee combo counter now decays while out of combat uh, by five every few seconds instead of uh, depleting completely. Um, really, really nice on this one. Um, so if you find yourself uh, building up combo counter because you want to go and get Blood Rush or Weeping Wounds or things scale off combo counter, um, this is very, very good. So now keep in mind, heavy attacks are somewhat... I guess they would still be good with this, but it's also kind of contradictory. So just keep that in mind. You can and you can't... You, the situations, but for the most part, Blood Rush, Weeping Wounds, anything that scales off combo counter right now, it's great. Gladiator mod set, you get the idea. Really, really nice. Uh, so these two are very good. Uh, moving over towards your waybounds, Mind Step increases operator movement speed by 30%. Mind Sprint uh, increases uh, Void Dash speed by 120. So you've got these both done as well. Uh, just good utility, go figure. So uh, using that, we'll go ahead and help you uh, get around with your operator. Uh, then moving over towards the void ones over here. Void mode increases critical chance of melee attacks by up to 50% over 5 seconds. This chance gradually decreases over 20 seconds. Okay, so um, this is also really nice if you are using any critical related builds. Um, uh, melee critical related builds. Um, again, blood rushes, your sacrificial steals. Um, just very, very good to go to throw in there. Uh, forgive me, uh, off the top of my head, I cannot remember if this is relative crit or absolute crit. Um, I believe it's probably relative crit, but I cannot remember off the top of my head. I, I don't think it's absolute. Yeah. Um, Absolute, sorry, ab in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, absolute is additive crit, relative is multiplicative crit. I believe it's multiplicative. Uh, avoid Hunter. Void mode reveals enemies within 25 meters through walls. It, you don't overly need this for what it's worth. As you could imagine, it's, again, we're so quick when we move in Warframe, and we're so efficient at taking things down. Uh, sure, 
but not really overly needed. Okay, so sure, but not really overly needed. And then we kind of move over towards uh, executing dash. It no longer displaces enemies. And instead, it will open them up to finishers and increase in finisher damage. And um, this is actually really funny if you go and pair this with uh, Rhino. And if you use an arcane called arcane ultimatum, um, you open them up towards finishers. You then finisher the enemy. Uh, you then get, I think it's a, a max rank. I believe it's 1,200 armor. And then you go ahead and apply your iron skin. So <laughs> it's a really cool way of actually pairing this up towards uh, Rhino and uh, using things like Arcane Ultimatum. Uh, Surgeon Dash creates a uh, wave while dashing, increases the damage by 30% and the area of effect around the operator by 12 uh, meters. Um, sure. I mean, again, I don't find myself using these as often, um, but they are still there. Playstyles, you know everyone's going to be different. I haven't found myself using these as often. And uh, then that leads us towards the very last two, which is Disorient and Blast. Uh, Void Blast has a 50% chance of confusing enemies for 16 seconds, uh, so a bit of crowd control. Uh, so it's like a radiation proc, uh, four seconds greater than the radiation proc, but it's only got a 50% chance of doing it. And Disarming uh, is a 50% chance of disarming them. It's kind of like a Loki's uh, radial uh, disarm. It's almost like Loki's radial disarm, actually, now that I think about it. Um, disarming them, uh, well, 50% chance is here, but disarming them and confusing them uh so they can't distinguish who is who um whoops sorry i don't know why i'm leaving the tree so when it comes towards narrowman what would i take i'd take affinity spike i'd take power spike i kind of like void style stalker but only if i'm doing an awful lot of melee and uh, i'm going for some really big returns mind step mind sprint I definitely would be taking these uh and then it's only a few situations where i would go ahead and overly take this one but uh, that's mostly about it these i don't and i have not found myself using as often that doesn't again it doesn't mean that they're bad i just haven't found myself using them as often um i believe i've covered everything this video went on a lot longer than what i was expecting and i apologize that when people see it they're going to be like oh good god this is uh, a very long video but um i had fun making this and i really hope that i've cleared up I believe that I've cleared up absolutely everything that uh, I can possibly talk about. Um, but guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you did go to make it this far, my goodness. Um, if you guys do ever want to go and catch me live, um, I do actually stream on twitch.tv. Um, so you're always more than welcome to go and check that out. The link is in the description. And you can always go and ask me questions. I do do a bit of other variety as well, but I am still planning to make lots of Warframe guides. But overall, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, consider liking the video. I'd appreciate it. It lets me know how well I'm doing. Uh, and dislike it. If you generally didn't like it, you didn't think there was good enough information, please let me know. Drop a comment. I just appreciate the honest reviews. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you guys on the next video, which will be uh, hopefully to towards how to earn focus farming and the methods and the builds that I use. Elite Sanction Onslaught, Sedna Adaro. So until then, have a good day, guys. Thanks for watching.